Today we're going to be learning about broken line graphs. First, let's quickly talk about what broken line graphs are. A broken line graph is a graphical representation of a variable changing as time or a different variable changes. Most of the time we're working with broken line graphs that are in terms of time, but you can also get broken line graphs that have a, another variable that is changing and you're measuring another vari a different variable according to the first variable. But most of the time we're, we're measuring the changes of one variable as time progresses. Okay. The graph is made up of points which represent the different data values and these points are joined by straight lines. Broken line graphs can be used to see trends and patterns providing a means for making predictions. Okay, so let's have a look at the rules that we need to follow while we are drawing both broken line graphs. So here's an example of a broken line graph. So you can see we've got our points that are plotted like this. So this point over here is saying, if this is saying the time that's been spent on social media, in, and here's the time in minutes and here's the days, then this point is saying that this person spent 15 minutes on social media on Monday. This point is saying they spent 20 minutes on social media on Tuesday. Here they spent 15 minutes again on Wednesday, then it was 25 minutes on Thursday, then it was 45 minutes on Friday, 50 minutes on Saturday, and 40 minutes on Sunday. So that's the amount of time for each of the different days that they spent on social media. So here is our time axis, and here is our other variable which has been plotted as time changes. So the, this variable, we're looking at how it varies and how it changes as time progresses. Okay, so that's an example of a broken line graph. And here we've got our points with the straight lines that are joining those points. Please take note that a broken line graph is not the same as a straight line graph. A straight line graph is drawn using an equation. A broken line graph is drawn using points based on data that you've collected. They're different. Okay, so now let's have a look at the rules we need to follow. So just like for bar graphs and for histograms, when you draw a broken line graph, you have to have a title. That is the, the label for your whole graph, saying what this graph is all about. You also need to make sure that you label your axes just like you had to for your other graphs that we did. And you need to make sure that you have got a consistent scale on your axis over here where you're using consistent scale intervals and obviously here you're going to have your time plotted. The next thing you need to make sure of is that you have straight lines joining your points after you have plotted them. Okay so let's have a look at our first example for today. Here we've got our first example. It says the temperature was measured every three hours for a 24-hour period and you can see over here you've got your times, you've got uh, midnight, then you've got 3 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, which would be midday, then you've got 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 6 o'clock in the evening, 9 o'clock in the evening, and then midnight again. They've also told us what the temperatures were that were measured at those different times. So in degrees Celsius, the temperatures were 13, and then 13, and then 12, 12, 15, 17, 17, 15, and 14. So we are going to plot a broken line graph to represent the data. If you have got the worksheet that goes with this, you can just do it on the axes that are provided. Otherwise, you're going to have to draw your own axes for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to plot this graph.
Okay, so let's take a look at what your graph should look like. So over here, I've got the graph. Remember, you need to have a title for your graph. So I just called it temperatures over 24 hours. Here we've got our axis for the temperature, which we need to specify as in degrees Celsius. And then here we've got the time. Then you had to go and plot your points. So the first point is this one over here that is at 13 at 12 o'clock midnight. Then we've got another point also at 13 at 3 o'clock in the morning. Then we've got a point at 12 at 6 o'clock in the morning. Then we've got this one over here, which is at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's also 12 degrees Celsius. Then we've got 15 degrees Celsius at 12 o'clock, which is midday. Then we've got 17 degrees Celsius at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then 70 degrees Celsius again at 6 o'clock in the afternoon evening. Then we've got 15 degrees Celsius at 9 o'clock in the evening. And finally, 14 degrees Celsius at 12 o'clock midnight. Okay, so that's what your graph should look like. Now let's have a look at our next example. So practice activity two, we've got two TikTokers decide to compare their views data over the period of two weeks. They plotted their views in the broken line graph below. Now here, this is an example of a broken line graph where we are comparing the data for, in this case, two different sets of data. So we've got the data from TikToker A and we've got the data from TikToker B. This is similar to the concept of when you have a double bar graph where you can compare different sets of data. So in this case, I have done a solid line for the one and I've got a dotted line for the other. This is what it would need to look like if you're looking at something that's printed in black and white. But if you're looking at it in color, then you could have it like this, where you have the different uh, sets of data represented with different colors. And then your key will need to show you, in this case, the key shows you that you're using the dotted lines. And for this one, it shows you that you're using the different colors. So your key will tell you what each color or what each line type is representing. Okay, so in this case, the blue line is TikToker A and the red line is TikToker B. If you're looking at the printed version, then the solid line is TikToker, TikToker A and the dashed line is TikToker B. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at the questions that you're going to need to answer for this. So let's just move that up a bit so we have a little bit of space for the questions. I'm going to give you a few seconds to answer each question. The first question, question A, how many views did TikToker A have on day two? Question B. How many views did TikToker B have on day 11? Question C, which TikToker had more views on day six? Question D, which TikToker had more views on day 12? Question E, on day four, what was the difference between their views? And last one, question F, compare and comment on the trends in the graph for TikToker A and TikToker B. Okay, so let's go through and see what you got for each of those questions. So the first question, how many views did TikToker A have on day two? So we're going to look at day two over here and look up to TikToker A, which is the blue one. So that's over here. Now you can see it's not quite on the line. Okay, so let, first let's have a look at this is from 2200 to 2300. So that's a, a 100 interval over there. 
So this is about three quarters of the way up. So that would be about 2,275 views is what you should have got over there. It's not 2,300 because it's not on that line over there. It's about three quarters of the way up, right? Then the next one, how many views did TikToker B have on day 11? So day 11 over here, TikToker B was the red one. So that's this one. It's halfway between these two lines. So those two lines are 1,800 and 1,900. So it's halfway between that. So that would be 1,850 views. Okay. Question C. Which TikToker had more views on day six? So now we're looking at day six over here. The blue one is higher than the red one. So that's TikToker A had more views than TikToker B. So TikToker A had, the, had more views. Then question D, which TikToker had more views on day 12? So that is over here, day 12. The red one is now above the blue one. So that means the TikToker B had more views. Then question E, on day four, what was the difference between their views? Now you need to know that difference in maths means subtraction. We have to subtract the two values to find out which one was more and by how much. So in this case, Day four, we're looking over here. The higher one is TikToker A at 2,400. And we're going to subtract TikToker B, which is 1,800. And that gives us the difference of 600. So the answer for this is that TikToker A had 600 more views than TikToker B, right? Then question F, compare and comment on the trends in the graphs for TikToker A and TikToker B. Now, I'm just going to move this up so we have a little bit more space to work with. So first, we're going to look at TikToker A. Now, you can see that TikToker A's views are very erratic. That means that they're going up and down, up and down, and up and down. They're changing a lot over time, okay? So first of all, TikToker A's views are very erratic. Also, if you look at it, there's actually a bit of a, a downward trend. Over here, the views are higher and they seem to be getting lower. Yes, it's going up and down and up and down but the general trend seems to be downward. Okay, now let's have a look at TikToker B. TikToker B has got much more consistent views. It's not nearly as erratic as TikToker A's views were. It's not jumping around nearly as much. It is still going up and down, but it's not nearly as erratic. It's much more consistent. Okay, so TikToker B TikToker B's views were more consistent. And also, if you look at TikToker B's views, you can see that there's an, a general upward trend. Okay, it's gradual. It's not a very rapid upward trend, but it is an upward trend. So if we were to take this and make predictions for the future based on this data, we would be able to say that probably TikToker B would continue to improve and to continue to grow, whereas TikToker A may improve but at the moment, it looks like they are going down in terms of their views. So you can use the data that you can see in this graph to make predictions for the future. Okay, and that is how we work with broken line graphs. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.